What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. I know that um, I'm doing the intro from my desk today. Just for this video in the future, I'll probably go back to my car, but uh, just a little different for this video. If you're new to the channel, every month I do whatever it takes to get enough money to um, travel. And for this video, we'll be doing some food delivery and We'll be raising as much money as we can to build a budget and put towards a traveling trip. So let's get right into it and see how much money we can make today. All right, strap in everybody. It's been the warmest for the most consecutive days in Seattle, uh, high 80s to low 90s. And today is no different. So we start the day off 9 a.m. And we're just trying to get um, some hot breakfast out to everybody. And it's been a bit slow on the slower side just because, I mean, these warm days, they're they're kind of tricky. So sometimes in the mornings, it's uh, a little bit slower just because nobody wants a hot breakfast on a blazing hot day. And I think that every market is different. We'll just see how much of an effect the hot days play out for today. I do still get some good orders, for example, at the Egg and Us, $17.47, just for a quick 15-minute um, delivery, so not too bad. I had to go up to the um, apartment though. Also this uh, Emerald City smoothie. Man, these power uh, energy drinks, I thought this place was supposed to be healthy. Okay, so we're about two hours in. Um, off peak time, I'm about to go into uh, the lunch rush, or the start of the lunch rush is 11 o'clock. And the first two hours of off peak time, I think I averaged about $24. That Emerald City smoothie really screwed me over pretty badly um, apparently some machine like exploded or something and made a huge mess so they had to like re-clean it and that slapped on an extra 15 minutes which I mean for a six dollar six dollars something and change um, order that was definitely not worth it but I didn't want to make a, uh, a big deal like this like this other dasher did um, Cause you know it's not really. I mean, everyone's just trying their best. So, I'm. I make this stuff happen. So I just went with the flow, um, and I just took it. So I don't know if I'll do that next time. But to this time, I just took it. I uh, didn't want to just add on to the the stress that that was just in the room. Uh, but other than that, it's okay. I'm just gonna keep going, and I think that things will turn around for this uh, lunch lunch rush. And we're just gonna keep plowing forward. For the lunch shift, just overall, I was just getting very um, consecutive um, orders from both Uber Eats and DoorDash so that I could just get one after the other. But they were very short and very, um, not very large orders, not very good payouts, but they added up to be um, a decent amount. So I just kept going and that's what it seemed like the paces was going to be throughout the whole lunch shift just for this really, really hot day. Um, I mean, that's just what I got to accept. I think that this isn't too bad um, considering that I'm not just like rushing too hard on the, on this really hot day. I did end up running into a little snag. I, I ended up um, going behind this uh, garbage truck, which was just moving up a couple of feet, getting some garbage a couple of feet i got stuck i couldn't find, think of a way to turn around but um i just kept staying there and just kept on this really chill uh light pace about 225 so we're five and a half hours in and we're on decent pace uh at one point the lunch rush was going pretty quickly and i was getting good amount of orders and then it just died off and i was not getting any orders so I think I'm gonna head back, maybe sit around, maybe try to squeeze out another order or two uh, before I'm probably gonna take a break, a lunch break, and then uh, lead into the dinner shift. Man, it is really hot. I am uh, dying in this car, even though I'm rocking the AC. It's still, it's gonna be hot all this week, 90s. And I don't think it really slows down in in Seattle, the times that I've tested it out where it's really hot for Seattle standards, it's still a decent a decent pace. I feel like people are 
just in their house with the AC on and they're getting food and they don't want to cook at home because then they'll just make their house hotter. So I think, uh, you know, people just make up theories and that's what I'm doing here, just making, making stuff up um, to, to reason through things. But anyway, we're going to keep on going and let's just keep on trying to plow, pull as much money as we can. So in between the dinner shift, I got an order from Little Woody's and the customer ended up messaging me and saying that they put in the wrong address. And so they asked me to send it to a different address and they said that they would give me a little extra tip. Uh, so I'll go ahead and comply and I go ahead and drive over there. It's It was an extra four minutes, but I uh, delivered it hopefully to the right address. Uh, following that, I decided to change things up and accept this Bartel drugs. I just wanted to change things up because of the heat, but I did not look at how many items it was. It was eight items, and that was a pretty big mistake. Um, when it's like this, it's it could be it, it becomes too random. And at a drugstore like this, you you can't really it's really difficult to find where all the food is. And sure enough, that happens. I got I got to look for this rice stuff. Um, which the majority of stuff on this list I could not find. So I ended up just um, had to tell the customer that th some of these items weren't there, which they weren't, th most of the, the ice cream. So overall for the day, I, I wasn't uh, too invested. I, I decided to call it quits after 10 hours, and we go ahead and make a $163.55 from uh, DoorDash for 10 hours and $141.38 for a total of 300 and um, about $4, $304. And in addition to the money I made from the DoorDash failure, um, we come out to be about $588 total for our budget to go on our uh, traveling trip. So with $588, we can only afford to take a quick day trip. So we're going to fly to Las Vegas in the morning and then fly back at night. And Las Vegas is mainly, mainly known for a lot of things, gambling, uh, nightclubs, day clubs, pool parties. But instead, we're going to be focusing on the eating as aspect. Vegas is known for also known for uh, having like really great food having some of the best restaurants in the country so we're gonna go ahead and get a piece of that we're gonna spend all our money on food mainly and i mean we're, we can do some sightseeing for the most part um but mainly focus on food Flight to here, flying at 5 a.m. was a uh, that was a bad idea. It felt like the sh sh how it played out. It felt like a red eye. I've I've flown a red eye before, one time before, and never again. And this time, because the flight was so early, I basically couldn't sleep, and ended up it ended up basically being a red eye. I tried to sleep on the airplane, barely could. Um, yep. Not doing that again. 7 a.m. earliest. I think that's what I'm going to do from now on unless the the budget does not does not call for that. I, I, I Otherwise, I had to do some adjustments. It's 10 a.m. and we're looking for a spot to get brunch. A um, couple of days ago, Vegas got wrecked by flash floods, so we want to stay away from areas that are really damped and damaged. Who knows what, what can fall on your head um, from the uh, the flooding so that's the game plan um, we are we are trying to get, uh, have a light brunch so that we could be starving by the time dinner rolls around so that we can uh, eat our entire fill we go ahead and head over to the Bellagio a casino that I think has been robbed by 11 guys I don't know don't don't quote me on that so we head over there and get brunch at Sadell's and I go ahead and order a uh, salmon benedict, which was uh, pretty good. For dinner, we head over to Caesar's Palace. And some say that the real Caesar used to live here. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. 
But uh, here they have a restaurant called Nobu, and we're looking to get the Caesar omakase here. The total for this meal was almost $300. I know that that is a lot of money, but we went out and made that money, so might as well and go ahead and spend all of it and uh, get the best of what, what we worked for. So I got this omakase, and omakase means it's up to you in Japanese. Anytime you get the opportunity to do some kind of tasting menu or leave it up to the chef, because the chef is their job is to make some kind of you know amazing dinner and the uh, menu itself gets becomes routine but when it becomes a tasting menu or like an omakase like this it c continuously evolves and the chef adjusts it as um, depending on the ingredients they have and so you're getting the the chef's best le letting them be creative so any chance you get something, uh, a chance to order something like this, I would absolutely do it. And so we go ahead and get the seven course meal. Um, there's actually one plate that's missing. It was like a cod fish that I, I didn't like personally. But overall, the meal was delicious, okay? I just liked every single dish except for the cod one. It's now 10.30 and time to fly back to Seattle. Yeah, this is pretty spontaneous. Just having a quick day trip, um, leaving in the morning, coming back at night. But it was uh, fun overall, and this is the kind of mentality you want to have to have that traveler's mindset. So if you enjoyed this content, hit the subscribe button to see another video like this next month.